Hey, this is Cash Wheeler with FTR, a.k.a. one half of the greatest tag team of all time, saying go right now, savewithconrad.com, and I promise you, you won't regret it. If I could say take advantage of one thing with First Family Mortgage, it is the knowledge that they have because they have knowledge far beyond just the loan process, and they can help you out with all of that. That's how confident I am of working with these people. Like, I'm going to keep buying, and I'm going to keep going back. Savewithconrad.com. And MLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lenders. Woo! Right now, Fight Plus, the ultimate digital platform for live sports and entertainment, is offering a free seven-day trial at tryfight.com. Yes, you can access Fight Plus's incredible library full of combat sports, wrestling, and other premium content absolutely free for seven days by going to tryfight.com and the best part you can find them on all major streaming platforms available today so don't waste another second go to tryfight.com that's t-r-y-f-i-t-e.com right now and find out why they are the undisputed champ of live sports and entertainment symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. Hello and welcome to Arn. This is Paul Bromwell, and today I'm joined by the Hall of Famer, the founder of the Four Horsemen, the creator of the Spine Buster, the 1A of tag team wrestlers in the history of the business, the man synonymous with the TV title, and the man who re returned to TBS television, baby, since the last time we recorded. He was bringing the Glock and the DDT, and... Uh, he also helped Warlow become the three-time TNT champion. He's the enforcer. He's my friend. He's double A. Arn, how are you, man? This T-shirt's got a little more meaning <laughs> it's today, I does. think, doesn't it? He's wearing the Armed Anderson shirt, for those of you that are just listening. But uh, tell us all about it, man. Before we get into Ask Arn Anything, you're back on TV and you're with Wardlow. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody expected that. It's kind of really not even from left field. It's from down the first base line or something, you know. Um, that guy has got so much potential, so much talent. He is such a class act. He is focused. He, he carries himself like a professional. He does everything right. He's just been getting some bad advice from day one. Bad guidance, I think, you know, in this business, when that locker room sees a guy that's got just unlimited potential, the claws come out, you know what I'm saying? They try to shut him down before he ever gets rolling in all kind of political ways and physical ways and you name it, playing with his head. Hey, breaking in a man's car is pretty stout, you know? And so uh, we just had a couple of closed door conversations and I just said, you let me worry about what goes on on the floor because I've, I've thought it, I've seen it, and I've done it decades before anybody else. Manipulating the situation from the floor. I said, let me just free you up to do what you do, and that's clean house. And he kind of looked at me and I said, don't worry about anything else that goes on. I'll take care of the floor. You just take care of the match. And... What makes it such a big victory, Paul, is that guy he beat, Powerhouse Hobbs, is a stud and is a superstar in the making. Make no mistake, that guy has got unlimited potential as well. So it makes the win even bigger. And I know you're a big fan of him and all the listeners of Arm, which, by the way, we have our ad-free show friends with us. We got Ken and Bryant and Yambag. They're all with us here, and others are joining in the chat right now. But, man, I'm telling you, your social media blew up, and it was clear that everybody loves the nostalgia. They love you, and they love seeing you back in the ring. 
And, and I appreciate you kind of sharing, you know, your thoughts and why, you, you know, you had a, a strategy for Wardlow. It's obvious you've been with TNT champions and coached them before, so it makes a lot of sense. But, man, how good did it feel being out there again for you personally? You, you've gone through a lot, you know, and uh, recently. But, man, being out there in front of that live audience and hearing that crowd and that pop and then you delivering that DDT. Tell us about those moments for you, man, personally. Well, I've said before, <clears throat> you get to a point in this business, if you're going to be in for the long haul and then you're not just in for a money grab and get out, as some guys are, but if you want to make an occupation out of this and a career out of this, and you figure out pretty quickly <clears throat> it's not about the money, it's not about getting a great table at a restaurant or being recognized at the mall or what it's about is that reaction from that group of fans. There is nothing like it. It's, it's why you suffer through the pain. It's why you make the long trips. It's why you sleep in airports and eat rotten food because at the end of the day, the payday is that reaction when you get it, when they're kind enough to give it to you, and especially when you've earned it. Nothing like it. Buddy, if you could have heard the throng of fans sitting at home, and that's what's amazing. I mean, I was my phone was blowing up. I had everybody. I was hearing from Allison and Amy and and Andrew Hermes, Big Red. All everybody was going crazy, and my phone was blowing up. I texted you later that night, and Arn, it was just so good to see you back out there. And the fans missed you. They loved you. And I can say on behalf of all the fans of this show. You're back where you belong on television, and now you're the sidekick. You're the man coaching the stud, War Dog, Wardlow, and it's going to be a fun ride. I can't wait to watch. Well, thanks for everybody that, that called you or texted you and had an interest in it. I appreciate it. You know, I love our family. It's uh, We cover each other's back, and we look after each other, and it's, you know, the timing maybe couldn't have been better. Certainly need some, some good news. Absolutely, buddy. You deserve it. Your whole family deserves it. And uh, the wrestling and us as fans, uh, man, it's just so good to see you back. Dominic D'Angelo, by the way, who does him and his brother do a lot for the show, wrote an interesting article as we record this. It just came out. I retweeted it from my Twitter account, but it was about you and the need for you in AEW and uh, your voice. And so I would tell all of our fans and listeners of the show, go out of your way to find it. Again, if you follow me on Twitter, I put it, pushed it out on retweet. If you follow Dominic, check it out. But real nice article on Arn being back and being involved with AEW and Warlow, so check it out. Uh, but man, listen, this is uh, what we're here about today is all one of my, it is, it's our favorite show, Arn, and it's all about the fans. It is Ask Arn Anything. And last week uh, we did a tease um, as we talked, you know, as we're talking through your career uh, at, that we're, you know, we're pivoting off of uh, April. That's going to be next month. And uh, But we're here. We have the ad-free shows, family members here. They're here in the chat. And again, guys, for only $9 a month, you can be a part of the ad-free show family, and you can check out some of these live shows. We're also, we get to have Arn on Zooms from time to time and get to have him live with our folks and be a part of that as well. Uh, but we're going to get started with somebody that you've gotten to know from the Ad Free Show community, Arn, and that is the first lady of Ad Free Shows, your friend and mine, Miss Amy Vaughn. And uh, Amy wants to know all the details about Wardlow, so we're going to start with her this week. She wrote, I want to know everything about Wednesday night. When did Arn know uh, that he would be paired with Wardlow? Will it continue or was it a one-off? Why the white track suit? Because <laughs> you know it pops his tan skin. Come on, Amy. Uh, when did Arn know that he was going to be doing the DDT? Who suggested it? She's got so many questions. Let's start at the beginning, Arn. When did Arn know that he would be paired with Wardlow? So was this something that you and Tony kind of been talking about for a while, or what that looked like? Yeah, um, the last dark taping in Orlando. Got to talk to him for a little bit, and uh, he ran that idea by me and said, think about it, and I didn't have to think much about that. I mean, that, the guy is a horse, and uh, if you go all the way back when they introduced Wardlow years ago, and they did a real, real quality video, I don't know if you saw it, 
on him like walking across a parking lot, like making his way to like he's going to work, right? Yep. And guys are coming up and uh, you know trying to mess with him, and he's creaming people all the way. Just every time he takes a few steps, there's something else. But it was really well done, and it was really different, and it was dark. And he's got that look of, of a guy, you know, he's really, a, I don't take this the wrong way, Amy, but he's really a handsome guy, you know, and he is jacked. He just, in every sense of the word, when he's looking at you, he's just impressive all the way around. And uh, it's not just beach muscles. He's, you know, the guy is stout. And I've seen him in the gym and he trains hard and he has this, undercurrent about him the thing my my uh history in this business and i've been in the ring with some very tough guys been in the locker room with some very tough guys and i mean on a worldwide scale not just a company scale or wrestling scale but some really tough guys and the ones that are the real killers you never even know they're in the room they don't bark they're not walking around with their chest stuck out. But when something comes up, they handle it. Um, that's the way I saw this guy. And I saw the way he walks the halls and he carries himself like such a professional and such a gentleman. And uh, all the way around, I would say there's a half of him is really a nice guy and a quality guy and a guy you'd want to have as a friend or a family member or teammate. And then there's that other half in there that, that I see where the veins start popping out in his forehead. He gets to screaming a little bit. He gets wide eyed a little bit and then a lot. And you know, there's a monster under there somewhere. Well, we saw it, and on top of that, he's just not a big guy that just mows you down. He ain't afraid to go up top. Some of that we're gonna to have to have some conversations about, because risk versus reward, you know. We know theory. how you feel about going up top. <laughs> Especially when you can stand on your feet and smack the crap out of pretty much anybody that's in there with you. So, uh, but he's the all-around cowboy. He's uh, He's got it all, all he needs is a little coaching up and being told this is okay. We talked about if this comes up, here's what you do. And don't question it. Don't worry about how the fans are going to feel about it. Don't worry about the end result. Just do it. If you'll give me just this much here in the beginning of blind obedience, it'll pay off for you. And then we can have another conversation where you're a little more comfortable. Because I know some of the things I've talked about and we've talked about, uh, it's out there. Yeah. you. Uh, this is our version, by the way. You've seen AEW All Access. This is this is our version of, of Arn All Access. So a couple more questions. Whose idea was it for you to do the DDT? I mean, this is your first night back and you're already drilling the DDT. Well, I've hit spine busters. I've hit some clotheslines. I've never hit a DDT since I've been in AEW. I don't know if anybody realizes that. Nobody would be looking for it. Everybody in the building and some of the feedback, there were some people a little bit disappointed, but I knew I could still stick a DDT if it came up. And so it was that element of surprise. What was the reaction like? Uh, oh, that's the other thing she asked about the promo chess checkers. This is just an off the cuff Arn special. Yep, absolutely. <sighs> I knew it. Anybody that's uh, a thinking man is, and I try to appeal to to my next door neighbor and anybody that would be listening to it. I try to put what I'm trying to convey on their level. Everybody gets that checkers are fun and good checker players are fun to watch. But it's the good chess players that are the diabolical. Don't do a lot of talking. Just kind of sit there. Measured. Measured. Good word. They have a measured response to everything they do. Nothing is off the cuff. And when they close in from the kill, 
you never saw that bishop when it moved and got forgot about. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that takes your queen, and pretty soon, once your queen's gone, we know what happens. That's right. And, uh, and I'll round it out with Amy's final question. What was the reaction like afterwards when that was uh, for you and Warlow coming back through the curtain? Um, I, I think, and I hope, and I'm pretty sure everybody was happy with it. And it was, uh, felt good, man. It felt good. It really did. I got, yeah. you know, all the things I love about this business, you know, being out there with professionals and, uh, getting the reaction that you hope for, uh, from the fans and the mechanics you know, the main thing is I don't want to get out there and make a fool out of myself if there's yeah, something right. yeah. something I can't do. I it mean, was flawless, though. It was it was great. Everything went went flawlessly. I won't apologize for it because I think it was certainly adequate. Yeah, it, it was very good, Arn. It couldn't have been couldn't have gone better for you and and for Wardlow. I mean, come on, he won the championship, and now you're at his side, mouthpiece, if you will. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, we'll move on. One of our other uh, pillars of the Arn Show female demographic, and that's Allison Fay. She wants to know if Wardlow reminds Arn of any member of the Four Horsemen when they were younger. Hmm. No, you know who he reminds me of a little bit. Just, just. In the fact that he's mobile, he's not just a big guy that walks around with logs under his arms. He reminds me a little bit of Batista. Uh, okay. You know, Dave was Dave got around that ring pretty damn good for a guy that was all jacked up like he was. And uh, same personality, a little bit quiet, you know, gentleman, professional, all those things that you hope, you know, it, it, not the look so much you know but dave had a hell of a look too but but uh wardlow of uh, just off the top of my head that's probably the one that comes to mind i like that comparison you know uh i got i and a lot of our listeners i'm sure have had opportunities to meet wardlow you're right man he's he's a great guy i got to meet him in baltimore once and uh just over the top nice. He was the TNT champion at the time. Yeah, go ahead. Hold the belt, whatever you want. And I just thought he was a really impressive individual. Um, so I'm glad to know and see that you're going to be working with him, man. Yeah, I mean, he, and I'm sure he's a great employee, you know, and that goes a long way, too. You know, in this generation of, you know, there's a, and there should be some selfishness. You got your responsibility as a talent to go out there and get over but you better never lose sight of the fact that without everybody in that locker room, everybody in that truck, everybody backstage, without them all pitching in, doesn't matter what you do, you're not going to get over. So I think he's well aware of that and appreciative of the situation that he's in. Well, Lauren, like Amy, Allison Faye is also excited about the pairing with Wardlow. She wants to know if you think that future meet and greets will include the opportunity for the female talents, uh, female fans, I'm sorry, to be able to climb Wardlow like a tree. Those are her words, not mine. That's a, that'll be between Wardlow and the fans. <laughs> I can't say that. I think that'll be my time to, to take a bathroom break. <laughs> She's a hair lover, too, man. So she, I think she was really sad when he got his ponytail clipped. But, uh, oh, man. You know what? Hey, listen. And this is a treat for our ad-free shows members because this is what we're about to do. Already, Everybody sit tight in the chat. Here it goes. Arn, without a doubt, our girls are hot for the pairing of Arn and Wardlow. I mean, Allison wants to climb Wardlow. Her words, not mine. And I think it's our job to give the women what they want. And to that point, men, if it's been a long time since your significant other threatened to climb you like a redwood, might we suggest the only thing you need to make your gimmick so hard you couldn't cut it with Paul Bunyan's axe. And that, our friends, is Blue Chew. Blue Chew is changing the lives for men and women all over the world. Isn't that right, Arn Anderson? Yeah, did we ever get an answer to what would happen if the females took a couple of Blue Chews? We have not, but I feel like I feel like we have like Allison and Amy, like maybe maybe we have them be our guinea pigs. I mean, they like to be a part of this show. So, but we we still have to answer that question. We do. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's we know what it does for us. It's probably kept us on the radar a little longer than we should have been. How many? How long have you been married? Uh, 20, 
22 years? There you like go. Yeah. You know, I'm pushing on 40, you know, up there, 39, 40. Oh. Brother, we need an advantage. We do, man. We're not young and spry like we used to be. Because we've overachieved anyway. Yeah. You know that. Both you know of us that. Did. Yeah. So we better do everything we can to, you know, stay in the rotation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Blue Chew will do it. Coach Rosie says it's what makes his nipples hard. So not only will it harden, you know, what we always, what we talk about, pitch your tent, but apparently it'll also make the old nipples hard if you're having a problem there too. But listen, Blue Chew is an online prescription service. There's no waiting in line at the pharmacy. It ships right to your door. It's dis- in a discreet package, and it's simple. All you got to do, go to bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, boom, Within days, it arrives at your front door in a discreet package. And if you don't like swallowing pills, that's no problem because they have chewable ta- uh, t- uh, tablets just like those Flintstone vitamins we all used to eat when we were kids. Listen, there's all kinds of reasons guys can't perform. It could be age. Maybe you've got a lot on your mind, some anxiety, things like that. Blue Chew is going to be that difference maker. It's going to make you feel like armed Anderson, if you know what I mean. It is the Glock in your shorts. So check it out now, bluechew.com. Go to bluechew.com, and when you use our promo code ARN, that's A-R-N, ARN at checkout, you pay $5 in shipping, and that's it. Bluechew.com, promo code ARN. It'll have you, it'll have your spouse, it'll have your significant other howling at the moon, just like I do when I say ARN. That's right. So go to bluechew.com for more details and safety info. Blue Chew is where it's at, my friends. Please tell me when you do that iron thing <laughs> that you're not all blue chewed up. Oh, man. Blue Just, chewed up, and I'm, I'm yelling it like Larry Zabisco. You not, sounded like Larry Zabisco uh, when you did that. <laughs> not the proper time to be selling the blue chew. <laughs> even if you say, oh, Larry, oh, my God, oh, Larry. <laughs> Oh, that Larry impersonation pops me every time. God, oh, that I love it. We're going to incorporate Larry next time into our next Blue Chew commercial. We're going to have some fun. We should have Larry on the show. We should. I think Larry's got to be a guest. There's no doubt about it. Guys, listen, bluechew.com forward slash on. We love doing these commercials, as you can tell. But the only way we can keep doing them is if you buy it from us using that promo code ARN. So go check it out. And, uh, and I'm telling you, it won't be a downer. Uh, it, it won't be a disappointment. There you go. It's a no-brainer, guys. The competition is way, way overpriced, and it's the same effect. <laughs> Coach Rosie said, maybe my wife has been screaming Arn all these years, and I wasn't aware. So she had been screaming something. She just figured He just figured out what the noise was. So yeah, she go. might have been screaming at me to take the trash out or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right. Allison and Amy, we love you, and thank you for playing along and being such loyal friends to the show. Our next up, Big Papa Corn. You remember Big Papa Corn? He shipped all that awesome popcorn to our house not too long ago. Yes. Yeah, well, he's back, and he's got some questions, and uh, he sent me a video clip from Wrestling Flashback, and he wants me to ask you about it. In the clip, the narrator is talking about how you and Aaron were not pleased with the way your drinking was portrayed in the parody done by the NWO leading up to war games. That Remember that all those years ago when Kevin Nash... Did the, yeah. Not, yeah, remember that? Yeah, but I, I, you know what? That's You're way past that, right? But there's a question about that. <clears throat> it's not necessarily about that. Because in 2000, you ran in on a match where Nash was wrestling Bret Hart for a world title in Florence, South Carolina. And you hit Kevin in the back with a lead pipe. And on a table for three segment, Kevin Nash said, man, it felt like a lightning bolt shot out of his ass uh, when I got hit with it. But he's like, I think that was my receipt uh, from that Arn skit. Do you remember that uh, that Florence, South Carolina with the old the old lead pipe to the back? And, and yeah, was that a receipt or? No, I wouldn't, you know. It was, the parody was what it was. Hopefully they got what they wanted. You know, my my biggest gripe with that, which I've said before, is there was just no payoff. Yeah. You know, if there would have been a payday down the road, it wouldn't have made that look, you know, quite as vindictive as it was. Yeah. That's all. Because everything in this business should be about business. It should never be personal. So, 
Uh, and I do remember the run-in, and if I did potato him, I, I did not mean to, and I certainly wouldn't hit him in the back with a lead pipe. What a chicken shit thing that is. If I did get him a little bit, it was by accident, and I apologize. Uh, it was all part of the storyline, and it was all I saw the I saw the run-in and uh, and the and the lead pipe. It was all part of what was supposed to happen. But and, once uh, once you once you get in our business area. Paul, once you're around by the ring or you're in the ring and you're at work, you don't ever take a liberty with a guy. That's right. If a guy potatoes you, you know, if it's one of those things, you let it go. If it happens again, then you just give him one back. That's right. It's called a receipt. Yeah, yeah. it's called a receipt. And there's no anger involved in it. It's just, hey. It's part of the business. Let You let them know. You yeah, know? That's, that's that silent I, rule of the business. Can go either way, which yeah. whatever you prefer. Uh, so, but yeah, if I did, it was, it was, it's all good. A and, potato. Uh, there you go. Well, Arn, we'll move on from that. Friend of the show, Brad Stanton is up next. He said, Arn, do you know that you have the perfect DDT? Did you know that? That yep. it's the perfect. <laughs> He's already clued in, Brad. He of course, knows. Brad, yeah. I do. Brad, there's a few things, just a very few things that I can do. But what I try to do is put them where they go and do them well. I try not to do anything that I can't do well. So that limits that limits me to about five or six things. And one of them is the DD freaking T. So there you go. I think so. The spine the, buster, the DDT. Gourd buster. Gourd buster, yeah. I mean, come on, th top three right there. Yeah, I will lay a man down and stomp his brains out occasionally. And you also had the nice spike pile driver with Tully. That was beautifully executed. So, I think so. Yeah. You won't uh, see me you won't see me head scissoring and drop kicking and No Frankensteiners. Any, nothing yeah, nothing off the top. And that's okay. You didn't need to. And I think that's why you're the perfect coach for Wardlow. Uh, we'll move on. Up next is a question from Dre. He said, what was Arn's favorite town in South Carolina to wrestle in? Any good stories about Florence, Columbia, Greenville, or any of the other towns there? Well, I think you have to say just because of the, the big matches that have happened there and how supportive the fans have always been. Greenville's probably number one. I would think Charleston is another great town. Uh, Florence, we didn't get to very often. That was one of those that's about 150 miles door to door for me. So down and back, I uh, didn't spend a lot of time around the Florence area, just basically straight to the building and straight back to Charlotte. Uh, but. Let's see what else we got. He said. Uh, he said. Any good stories about Florence, Columbia, Greenville, or any of the other towns there? Well, you know what happened in Columbia. It's. It's. It, I don't know if it's a positive thing. It depends on how you look at it. But that was where my retirement was. That's right. Which is will stand out, and you know, it's a moment in your career you never forget. It wasn't a positive thing for sure. One of the hardest things I've ever had to do uh, because there was saying goodbye have you ever gone back and watched that arn yeah once okay. all right and it was uh pretty emotional to be honest with you because again nobody nobody said anything they just said i asked you know i told them what happened at the gym i told them what my last doctor's report said and he will never clear me and uh so i knew and when the, the guy smacked me in the back and I had that electric shock go down my back or in my neck, you know, if you don't, if you don't accept that when it is God slapping you in the face, basically, because I full well planned on getting strong again and wrestling again. But that day, if you don't listen to what they're sent, the message you're being sent, then you're just a fool. Yeah. Hmm. 
Well, there you go. Uh, Jason Tepper, we'll move on. By the way, kind of a in comic relief, Brian Haremza in the chat says, I would pay big money to see Arn hit a Frankensteiner. Just a FYI there. <laughs> There's a lot of that would have been, been. Could you imagine just just jumping up Arn Anderson style, grabbing somebody with those two legs, wrap around the head and bringing them over? That would have been something else. I couldn't Frankensteiner a guy if he was on his knees. Not even in the swimming pool. Nothing. <laughs> I have really have no athletic skills, to be honest with you. Oh, well. you had, Again, I'll say it again. The, the way you delivered the DDT that we saw the other night, it was you didn't skip a beat, my friend, and that's all that matters, that impact. So technique, impact, all of it. It was uh, the total package. Jason Tepper says, uh, Arn, you mentioned befriending the neighborhood children when you brought, uh, bought your first home in Charlotte. Did the neighbors or children ever ask you if the wrestling business was legitimate? And if so, what did you tell them? No, uh, they were they were just at the proper age. I'm thinking, and it was a whole cul-de-sac gang of them. I would say it was anywhere from 10 on down, and they were at the right age. They just heard that, you know, and Jim Crocker Promotions was red hot at that time, 86. So they were all watching on TV, and, you know, they figured out there's, hey, that guy out there washing his car, he's that guy we see on TV or whatever it was. You know, it was one of those deals because we weren't home very much. If they didn't see you pulling in the house or leaving the house or out doing yard work, or which was very limited, I figured out pretty quickly, get that higher, that done. But, it, you know, they'd see me out sometimes laying in, uh, on the deck, you know, trying to get some color. Uh, and they just came down, knocked on the door, and, you know, would you sign an autograph for us? I said, well, sure. And they didn't have a pen, didn't have paper. They weren't prepared <laughs> at all. <laughs> so, so I just said, come on in, let me get something. And, boy, they really looked at me then like oh, I was crazy. Oh, yeah. Come on in, guys. And we had, at the time, we had Sammy, who was a beautiful Cocker Spaniel. I mean, like a show dog. Black Pe or, or golden? or? Uh, yeah, big golden. Okay. I mean, long, beautiful hair, sweet as he could be. Uh, you know, would come up and jump all over him, but in a good way, and they loved that. So it was, it was kind of like a regular home. I don't know what they were expecting. Uh, whether they were going to walk in, see a wrestling ring in the living room or what. <laughs> you weren't in tights, you know, it's just, you're a normal guy. It's yeah. so, so intimidating made, uh, though, I'm sure as a kid. Over the years, and we lived there 12 years, um, we made a lot of great, a lot of great friendships and, and stuff. So it, they were just a great, it was one of those, just every so often, just like the neighborhood I'm in now, it's just, People that you could take your, you know, your house key over and go, you know, I'm going to be gone for four days. Would you just get our mail and throw it inside the door and lock it back and hang on to the key? Those kind of people, you know what I'm mm. saying? Yeah. So it was a, uh, it was a, it was a good time. There you go. Mm. Sounds like a great place to, uh, to live and grow up there in that neighborhood. Hey guys, we interrupt this episode of Arn to talk to you about something that's very important to me and the Enforcer, and that is a good night's sleep. And we're here to help you with that. We're talking about warmer temperatures right now. It's warming up in the spring and summertime, and it might be just a little harder for you to find and get that deep sleep at night. Maybe you were enjoying that through the winter months. Well, it is a little bit warmer. The air conditioners are raised up, but I'm gonna tell you how you can make sure you're comfortable at night when you're sleeping. And it starts with Sleep Me and their mattress toppers. You can find the Doc Pro and Cube sleep systems right now on sleep.me forward slash Arn and save 20% off. Now, let me tell you about the Doc Pro. It's their newest, most powerful system for a perfect sleep climate. So if you like your side a little colder, she likes hers a little warmer, you have the ability to do that and adjust with both of these systems. But the Doc Pro is where it's at. I'm telling you, no matter your body's heat load or room temperature, you can adjust it perfectly and take advantage of this. And for an extra layer of comfort, you know about the Chili Blanket. We've talked about it here on the show. The only weighted blanket that can also be paired with the control unit for the ultimate sweat-free sleep. Nobody wants to wake up sweaty. We need it to be sweat-free, nice and dark. 
and nice and cold and sleep.me is here. So check it out. Sleep.me forward slash ARN. You know those three letters, A-R-N, to take advantage of our exclusive 20% off discount right now. That's sleep.me slash ARN to take advantage of our exclusive 20% discount and wake up refreshed, feeling like a horseman every day. Josh Clemens is up next. He said, how did Arn handle interactions with fans during his career since he worked mostly as a heel in the kayfabe era? I met him at StarCast in Nashville, and he couldn't have been more gracious, so it's hard to imagine him going full heel on a fan outside the arena. So, yeah, how did you handle that, Arn? Yeah, I, I, I was a heel. I mean, I, I was one of the last guys, I think, which hasn't been that long ago, that finally figured out, you know, hey, Kayfabe is dead. I still disagree with that to a point uh, because there are so many real emotions, real injuries, and other real things that go sure. on in our business. Um, but yeah, I did some barking. I mean, we came out of those arenas. You know, a lot of times people did not like us at first. 85, 86, we had some heat. Probably starting into uh, 87, people were had figured out, okay, you know, I've seen, I've been to 16 shows in a row over the years, and these guys have gotten beat every single time. Some of this has got to be horseshit. You know what I mean? And yeah. then they, they just, you would go out and, and you would perform your ass off to the best of your ability and give them. And they knew every everything you had, we would give them. No matter what the other matches did, and you had some great matches on the card. When it came to the horseman matches, they got entertained. They got their money's worth. And it, it kind of turned us babyface. Without, that's the only reason. Because we were still three and four and five guys jumping on one guy and all the nasty things you can do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Slamming a guy's... Oh, you know, arm in a car door. In a car door, yeah. You know, chaining a guy up to a truck in the back of Crockett, beating him up with a baseball bat. I mean, you name it. That's pretty. All, that's that's felonies in most. All the most shit cities. we loved, everything we loved, and is and, and memorable. It, you know what? As a kid, that's memorable, and that's stuff that we. Uh, we grew up on. And real quick, I want to go to it because I just saw it in the chat. Andrew Hermes is here, does a great job for the show, by the way. He says, uh, Greenville, going back to the South Carolina question, that's where Flair returned September 1998, and that was one of the biggest pops that uh, ever heard for you, Arn. And so that's maybe another member <coughs> for you. Yeah, it was a great night. Had a lot, of, a lot to cover as far as addressing Dean. And, you know, it was a pretty good story. You know, yeah. Dean had tried to get me to put the horseman back, and I certainly wasn't ready. And there was some good drama to it. And, really good. You know, and I, I was able to pull off, you know, they were chanting for Flair, and I tried to make it seem like I was shutting down the interview that there would be no Flair. You, you were going to, you'd already got all you were going to get. And I did the old, oh, what a goof. Rick Flair, come on down. And brother, yes. that place erupted. I mean, insane. What, what, what's, what, it's just great memories. Great memories for you, I, I know, and great memories for us as fans. Uh, one of our old pals, Lauren Eason, asked, and it's this is in all caps, Arn, when is Arn going to manage FTR? <laughs> that photo that just came out, okay, with you and FTR and Wardlow, I don't know if you've seen it. It's all over social media. Did you guys take a photo together backstage? We did after, yeah, after yeah. the match and all that, yeah. Yeah, Dax put it out and was just like, man, what what could have been, or I forget this comment on it, but it, it lit up social media and everybody's like, my God, what a crew that could be. I'll give you the answer. When? When? <laughs> there you go. Hey, you know, it's, uh, again, I've said many times my last goal and my last act in this business is, is going to help Brock get squared away. And uh, that's my goal. That's my ambition. That's that's why I'm still, you know, so passionate because I love this business. 
you know, let's face it, Paul, there's some great guys and girls, and I found that out over the last couple months. You know, there's some really wonderful people. Um, but the opportunity to manage those guys. They are in your mold, brother. They are oh in your tag God. team mold, man. If you had all those those three guys and had the right guy stirring them up, that'd be me. Mm-hmm. Whew. Sky's the limit. You got it right. And uh, talk about fire. That, that, that's just uh, amazing. And so uh, we'll see what happens, Lauren. There's a lot of us that would love to see it, that's for sure. But uh, let your voices be heard on social media, and you never know what can happen. Uh, Uncle J89 tweeted this. Hey, Arn, big fan of yours, and I have a couple questions. First, how was it working in ECW, and how did that deal come to be? Um, I kind of got just booked out over there for a couple shots in between. Uh, I think it was when Bill Watts had sent Bobby and I home. Okay. Uh, we were home for a few months and uh, still under contract, and... Uh, I think after he got let go or there was just a short window there, they had asked for me and Bobby to come over and team with Terry Funk and Sabu for a tag match. Um, man, the violence over there, you know, out of one half of my heart was paying homage to those guys that would beat themselves up to the degree and beat each other up to the degree that they did. You have to respect that and say thank you for you know everything that uh, Paul Lee generaled and uh, brought to the wrestling world. It was another alternative to the other companies. Um, but then I went, God Almighty, are these guys going to be able to walk in five years? You know, I always go back to that. I mean, there was people falling out of the ceiling all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> that's just there but you know what it's all kind of fun too because we're going through that career or the time now the dangerous alliance so this is like a l little mini reunion with you and bobby with paul paul Heyman. you know he's in his doing his own promotion now yeah and it was maybe it was a precursor some of that stuff to what we see today yeah oh absolutely you know geez so apparently some of this generation were certainly affected and uh, uh to ecw and that's that's what I want to be when I grow up. That's the wrestler I want to be. I want to do that stuff. Yeah. It was so, a game changer. Yeah, man. It, it was a definitely something that I wouldn't be interested in. No. Well, it's a, definitely a, a, a different brand, a different flavor, right? You talk about ice cream. We have a few flavors that we like, right? And, hey, if you can do it without getting hurt, more power to you. Yeah. They'd be, they would be wheeling me out of there and into the back of the ambulance. <laughs> nah, there you go. Hey, guys. It's the hardcore legend Mick Foley here, and I need to call a quick timeout, a brief timeout, is I wanted to tell your listeners what I have been telling Foley is Pod listeners for a while now about all the cool things happening over on adfreeshows.com. An all-new edition of The Insiders is here. As Conrad welcomes David Zaudi, the man behind so many iconic video packages WWF fans grew up on, including one that left Vince in tears. You got it. And Conrad, I swear, I walked outside the studio and Vince was sitting down on the concrete floor, crying hysterically, just saying thank you. Thank wow. you. Thank you. I went up to the full cabin. He says, good job. Can't wait to see it. Fifteen minutes later in the stairwell, Vince is still sitting down in a different spot now, crying, saying thank you. Thank you. Special guest host Raven sat in for Jake the Snake Roberts on the Snake Pit, looking back 25 years on his rivalry with DDP and an interesting new member of the flock. Jimmy Hart comes up to me one day and goes, hey, Hulk, Hulk would like a favor. I go, what is it? He goes, he'd like you to put Hor Horace in the flock. I'm like, sure. What am I going to say no? But it, was, it became a running gag, like like uh, Jericho and Conan. We used to, three of us used to hang out together and call ourselves the triumvirate of useless information. And so they were like, you know, wait, did you put Horace Hogan in the flock because he's Hogan, Hogan's nephew? I'm like, what? He's Hogan's nephew? I had no idea. <laughs> That's just a small taste, a sampling, if you will, of what we have waiting for you. With four levels to choose from four. See for yourself why ad-free shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now, right now, at adfreeshows.com. 
Yeah. Uh, Uncle Jay also asks, what is the best and worst storyline that you were ever a part of and why? So do you have your most favorite storyline you were in and one that was like, what are we doing? Hmm. Best and worst. You know, I kind of liked the Midnight Express angle because between Bobby and I, the story was 100% real, legitimate. And everyone, I think, and when I say everyone, most fans, you know, they'd see us pull up to the arenas together and, you know, when we were tagging and all that stuff and they saw what good friends we were and we really were, we were best friends for a long time many, many years, and we never stopped being friends. But, I mean, there was times where I'd go over in his garage and on a day off and sit there from 5, 6 o'clock till 1 in the morning, just bullshitting, drinking beer and bullshitting. And it was time to go. I'd just walk through the backyard to the next street over, and I was home. So it was... It was it was a good time, and I wish we could have got more mileage out of it. But for that brief time, it was 100% real. What about the uh, storyline that you think, man, this is what am I? This is awful. Worst storyline? Anything involving Elegante. Perfect answer. That's it. How could I forget about Elegante? How could you? I know. I know. I'm sitting here that- trying to think through the storylines, but oh, my God, Arn. That should be branded in your memory forever. You saw the same footage I did. Yeah, I did. I did. Horrible. And I, always saw, I always saw you having to sell for that guy. Horrible. Yeah. Let's well, you got to, well, you've got to chase an eight-foot giant around, run him down to beat you up. Things are not going to end well. Let's uh, transition to something a little more lighter than that. And this is from Big Extra. And he wants to know, hypothetically speaking, Mrs. Anderson says to you, I'm going to make you your favorite dinner tonight. And it's the last time I'm ever making this dinner. What are you having? And how heartbroken are you that she won't be making it anymore? Your favorite homemade meal from Aaron. What is it going to be? Um... Probably gonna be Thanksgiving. That's a good one. Besides the obvious of the, all the things I have to be thankful for, give you an idea of some of the things on the menu. Certainly, you have to have a honey baked ham, right? Butterball, oh, yeah. butterball turkey. Okay, I'm, I'm liking it. Stuffing. Yes. Giblet gravy. Giblet gravy. Green bean casserole. Mm, preach. Potato salad. Okay. I cut my bowl off to the side and put some extra onions in it. They, the family aren't not so much on the onion, but me, yep. Yeah. Okay. Deviled eggs. I like it. And then she'll make peanut butter cookies with a, a Kershey Kiss melted right in the middle oh, I of know, it. Right, I know exactly what you're talking about. And no bake chocolate oatmeal cookies. This sounds amazing. Now you do the potato salad. Are you doing mashed potatoes too? Um, not usually. No, no mashed potatoes. Okay. No, no. Uh, thank you for saying that. We do twice baked. Twice baked potatoes. Okay. Yeah, that's they cook them, scoop the stuff out. Oh put yeah. It back, put it back in with, with some, some cheese, cheese on top. Um. Not being the super cheese eater, that one usually don't make the cut. <laughs> That's why you have a little bit extra of that potato salad. Yes. Okay. And I like to scoop the potato salad out and put it on a saltine cracker. Okay. That's something I haven't heard before. Give her a try before you knock it. I'm not going to knock it, but a little potato salad on a saltine, huh? Yes, sir. Now, how did you come up with that one? My granny used to eat it that way when she would make potato salad, so I learned it from her. Okay. Didn't take me while I figured out, well, she likes to eat too, and she's an incredible cook. There must be something to that. 
didn't take a lot of coaxing for me to, to, to give it a shot. Let me give it a shot. Yeah, right. And then now you're in. I like it. There you go. And how heartbroken would you be if she said, I'm, Aaron, I'm not making that meal anymore. No more Thanksgiving made by Aaron. God, I'd have to gather up the crew then and take them down to some four-star hotel or <laughs> something, Rich Carlton, and see what they had to offer on the buffet. I know, but that would still, I, I don't think they'd have that potato salad on a saltine. You know what I mean? Paul, we eat on that meal. That meal lasts us for about four days. All the leftovers sounds amazing. Uh, oh, and stuffed sausage stuffed mushrooms. Ooh. Coach Rosie wants to know, are you a mustard guy in your potato salad, or are you a mayonnaise-based only? Do you like the mustard in there? I think there's just a small hint to give it the wang. The wang. Not, not too heavy on the mayo. There you go. All right. He's a, he's home right now whipping a batch up, and he's he's on his way to, to the store to grab some saltine. So. It needs to be smooth. Don't, don't get the big chunks of potatoes. Smooth it on down to where it's... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. About the size of a pea. Okay. Wow. Man, this is some serious instructions, guys. So I love it. And Coach Rosie loves the Wang in probably in more ways than one. So there you go. Craig wow. Bursch is up next. Can't say that. <laughs> he tweeted. You are from Rome, Georgia. But yes. We're, okay, we're, uh, but we're in the Minnesota wrecking crew. Barry Darso was from Minnesota, but he was billed as Russian. Road Warrior Animal was from Minnesota and built from Chicago. Did you guys ever sit around and laugh at stuff like this? Well, I'd like to think that at least my story had some, a method to the madness. Oh, give it to us. Yeah. Well, Oli and Gene claimed they were from there. If I was a cousin, then you, okay. shouldn't I have been from there? Yeah. It's just when I open my mouth and I sound like I was from Paducah, Kentucky or somewhere. <laughs> You know, which is that's no not a Minnesota accent, right? That's not a knock on anything or anybody. The folks in Kentucky are awesome. No, Amy Vaughn's not hurt at all. Yeah, but that's a little bit off of the Minnesota wang. Yeah, that Minnesota wang. There's that wang. Uh, from Ad Free Shows, Patreon, Sam Lawson. He says, Arn, you're my favorite wrestler of all time. I was one of those college kids in suits back in the day, and we'd follow you and the horsemen from Dorton Arena to Cumberland County Auditorium, up to Greensboro, Roanoke, and back down to Columbia, South Carolina. I don't think you pioneered this heel bit, but you perfected it. The entering situation is as crisscross where you duck a clothesline or similar move, stop in your tracks, and tab your... Tap your temples as if to say, I'm too smart to fall for that. Then you turn around and immediately get absolutely clocked by a clothesline or a drop kick. My crew laughed so hard every time you did it, and it still cracks me up. Do you remember if you did invent this bit? Or if not, do you remember who you got it from? Thanks so much for a lifetime of entertainment. No, sir. It was around before I ever got in the business. And uh, I saw some of the smarter guys do it and pull it off because it was entertainment before there really was a whole lot of entertainment but you could sneak something like that in so I didn't I stole it from whoever I saw do it it's like a Dick Murdoch spot if you've ever seen Dick Murdoch but let me go back a little bit and just say thank you I'll never forget that group of guys that came to all the shows they were front and center dressed to the nines Great fans. And let me tell you something. I don't know if you guys watch the TV shows, uh, the syndicated ones, but when we got to talk about market specifics, we well, you guys got more TV time than we did. We put you guys over big time. So we appreciate the support. And you were part of the show, fellas. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, appreciate that, Sam. Uh, and uh, lo love to hear those stories. Uh, from back in the day and yeah everybody remembers that crew especially if you're a fan of crockett promotions uh aiden wants to know what do you think of uh them using the word enforcer that moniker enforcer for solo sokoa uh, Soko right now he plays a part in the bloodline are, are you okay with that and seeing that enforcer sure. okay yeah i think people are smart enough to know the difference i think it's the same i mean here will be the analogy <clears throat> I would like to think that P 
people see a lot of spine busters these days in all variations. Been that way for years. But I think people separate mine as being something, even though it could have the exact same movement. You know, Will Hobbs does a great spine buster. Probably has more whip on it than mine. I just have the, the technique and the rotation and everything that it, mine is separate from everybody else. Not saying it's better, just saying it's different and they kind of identify Spine Buster as my move because it is. I made it up. I was wondering when we were watching Wardlow and Will Hobbs, will we see Wardlow break out any of the old uh, Arn Anderson moves to add that to his repertoire? I don't think so. I think he's a guy, you know, now Brock, I may give some shortcuts to and some, some things. I may help fill his tool belt up with some of my stuff, but I think Wardlow is a totally different cat, and okay. I'm just I'm just looking forward to asking him, hey, what, what can you do that I haven't seen? What have you thought about doing that no one's thought about? You know, I want to get in his head. I want to pick his brain. See if, uh, you know, if he's, you know, creative. Because yeah. I, I got a good feeling when you're that athletic, it won't take much time if I propose something to him that he'll figure out a way, if he likes it, to pull it off. Carl Hayes wrote the following, It's triple crown season. Are you a horse racing fan or viewer? No matter what hat the enforcer was sporting in the 80s, it was stylish. So thinking his derby hat game would be strong. Be well, sir, and thank you for the podcast and years of entertainment in front and behind the screen. So what say you, Arm, big uh, Triple Crown fan, horse racing fan, or no? No. I mean, I would I watch it on TV if, if I happen to be home just because it's – how long does it take to run that? 60 seconds, 90 well, seconds, two something minutes. Like that. Yeah, I, and I don't, I'm not a fan either. I don't really watch a lot of horse yeah, It's I don't exciting watch to watch yeah. the race itself, not even knowing any of the horses or, or their owners or any of that stuff. But, I mean, it's exciting to watch. Uh, but I, I would just happen to be sitting on the couch and flipping channels and go, oh, there it is. Yeah. Not to say I'm a fan, but there's a whole bunch of money walking around. I can see that. Yeah. Some of those go-to-hell hats and get-ups. Oh, yeah. Preposterous. <laughs> they, uh, hey, listen, when it comes to the horses, I mean, I think my, many of us, we're, fr- we're fans of the horsemen, okay? That's, that's what we're here for, all right? Friend of the show, Terrell Lewis. Arn, getting to meet you at WrestleCon was such a cool experience for me. What are some of the challenges that you have when doing all-day signings? Um, if I get up, in the wee hours of the morning and get to the gym before the signing. So some of them start about nine. So with the fact that it takes me about an hour and a half, sometimes two hours when I first wake up to, to the point I'm ready to work out, just waking up and stretching out and dealing with being old. But if I can get that out of the way and get a really good workout, get a nice hot shower and go straight to the signing, I'm usually okay. If I lay in the bed thinking more sleep is better, I screw myself every time because my low back, it's not my neck anymore, my low back. Okay. If it ain't in perfect working order for me, it'll never be perfect again, but for me, I'm in trouble. Now, are you on like a set routine schedule or anything on with a chiropractor, or what does that look like? Um, when I can get there, I, not enough. My guy retired some years back. I try to get uh, adjusted, but to be honest with you, there's more more guys that you can't find, I guess, because there got to be a lot of chiropractors in a city like Charlotte. But they all have this routine of they want you to come in and they want to take uh, pictures, they want to take x-rays and all that, and then you got to come back a second time. No, I'm out today. I want to be adjusted today. Right. Well, good luck finding one of those guys, because mm. I know they got to make a living, too, and they don't want to take a guy that they don't know off the street and just start adjusting them. I get all that, but if you've ever had a sciatica that's out real bad and one leg's three inches shorter than the other one, I don't want to hear, well, we can get you back in and six days 
you know, let us take some pictures today and we'll get you back in six days. I don't, you don't want to hear that. Fix me. Right. I need help now, not, not six days from now. So if there's anybody out there in the Charlotte area and you want two new clients, that'd be Brock and myself, get a hold of Paulie, get a hold of me, get a hold of somebody. And, chiropractor, uh, chiropractor or us. Let us know if you know someone that can do the work and is ready to work on Arn, Arn and Brock. Yes, sir, because you'll have two of your best uh, clients that you've ever had. There you go. You'll be popping and cracking and, and straightening these guys out. Hey, listen, real quick, I wanted to get back to this because it made me think about it, but he talked about WrestleCon, these all-day signings. Our show's pretty good as far as when you, if you're in there and you know you're going to be in there for an all-day type of thing. What about just taking care of you as far as I know you get breaks to go to the bathroom and stuff, but are, do, do you get fed or do you? Uh, you know, Some do. Yeah. Um, a lot don't, to be honest with you. I mean, once you get started, and we try to get there right as the VIPs right before they come in, so they get preferential treatment. They're paying premium prices. Their whole thing is get in an hour before time. They can walk around unobstructed. If you're not there, well, what did they pay for? You know what I mean? So yeah. you try to have the fans in mind. It's all about the fans yeah, sure. anyway. But I got to be honest with you, if it's five hours, I may take two bathroom breaks. All I request is some cold bottled water over some ice. Um, I may drink one Coke, and it's a real Coke. It's not a Diet Coke or Coke Zero, because I want, I want the sugar. I want the That's caffeine. why the Hershey bars with almonds are a big win for Arn. Caffeine is what I'm looking for. Oh, I've got to okay. sit there. Because I can't go, you know, even if they had a, a buffet or something for us, at these things, I'm not a guy that can go sit and eat a big plate of food and now go sign for three more hours. Right, you're ready for nap. Bingo. <laughs> so it's self-preservation. I just never eat at those things. You know, you just. Well, uh, we're going to do one more question, and Arn, I'm going to make a uh, I'm going to make an executive decision here. We are going to do one more question, and then we're going to wrap up the show. And then you know what we're going to do for next episode. Because you and I are recording back to back. We're going back right back here to ask Arn anything. We're going to do a two parter because I got tons of questions. Holy moly. We'll push April back and t for another week, but I feel like I want to get all these questions in, man. And we're having a good time conversating. That's an executive decision that you're qualified to make. Yeah, I guess I'm going to make it if that's okay with you. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right. All right it's, about, it's about all these folks. That's right. And I want to get them all taken care of. Uh, that's why we're here. That's this guys, right. you know, that's right. be honest with you. There you go. Terrell says, would also like to you to rank your tag team champion partners. Ole, Tully, Larry, Bobby, and Roma. Not on their talent, no need to shit on anyone, but rank them on fun to work with and travel with. Tully, Ole, and they're kind of neck and neck, but Tully and I were partners just so much longer and had so much more success, I think. Uh, who was number three? You had Ole, Tully, you had uh, Larry, Bobby, and Paul Roma. Bobby, okay, Bobby, and uh, Paul. No, no, and Larry, and then Paul would be last, only oh, okay. because, you know, no nothing against Paul, you know, and, and there was some pissing, you know, back and forth, tricks us, you know, way back, you know, he, that wasn't his gig. He shouldn't have been put in that position. It was just. One of those deals because, the, you know, it was at the end of its existence, pretty much. It wasn't going to be a top, top, top shelf gimmick anymore. It was just trying to get some interest and still trying to steal a little bit from, from the horseman name. But by the time Paul and I were partners, it was, and plus we were baby faces, and boy, does that suck. I got no skills. He yeah. had great skills. He could drop kick. Do all you know some fancy stuff, come off the top, all that. I had, couldn't do any of that. 
So uh, I think it was a much better fit. This is kind of getting off of the subject a little bit, but him and Paul Orndorff made a much better team. There you go. The two Pauls. The Pauls. That's right. Paul squared. Well, listen, this Paul has just made the, the declaration. We're coming back next week to start the month of May with Ask Arn Anything. And we're going to continue on with, we have a laundry list of questions and I want to get all, through all of those this time around. But one more piece of business, Arn, before we end this episode, and that is following your return to the ring. Dirk Manning, the author of your graphic novel, uh, he tweeted out, I cannot express the amount of joy I felt seeing Arn back in action on AEW last night with the Glock too, but I certainly can use it as a reminder for you to pre-order his amazing upcoming autobiographical a graphic novel uh, from Source Point Press at arncomic.com. That's right, guys. Arn's graphic novel is coming soon with an anticipated release date that is mere days away. You can't sleep on it. Arn, what a time for you to be back on television, and now here comes your comic book. How cool is this? Uh, makes you wonder about... That's right, man. I don't wonder. I, I know for a we, fact God's taking it. care of us, you know? Yep. It's hard to believe sometimes that, that you can really go through so much hardship, but all these nice things are coming together for me. I just about forgot about the graphic novel, to be honest with you, because my head was so far somewhere else. Yeah. But it's, it's going to be one of those things that you're going to be reading about halfway through that. You're going to set it down, call your buddy, and go, hey, you might want to pick one of these up. You ain't going to believe, you know, this story or that story or what's going on. So it's a, it's half comic book and half autobiography. It should be something for everybody. Can't wait to check it out. If you haven't pre-ordered one, make sure you do, guys. Don't forget, you can access all things Enforcer by going to arnlinks.com. Once there, you can find all the links to our social media, previous shows uh, in the archive, and the links for the Horseman store and the Arn Show store. And if you want to go straight to those stores, you can also go to boxagimmicks.com. Or, and that's where they can get T-shirts like you and I are both wearing today. I got a Four Horsemen shirt on. You've got Armed Anderson. But, man, the jackets, the hats. And I, I did notice that so many hats have been sold that we're out of stock. I was just talking to Maureen today. And uh, it looks like we're close to being able to restock the store with the hats. And she's working on visors. So more to come. There's tank tops now out there for the summer season. Great. So lots of good stuff out there. Uh, tell Maureen or ask Maureen again about I'm looking at you know like the regular starter PE shorts maybe with the horseman yeah logo. little little yeah the PE oh, shorts there you go yeah. might be a nice I mean I I'd wear them every day because I'm a shorts guy but a lot of people you know it's a good looking emblem it's uh it's another thought. There you go. Listen, if your business targets 25 to 50 year old men, listen, there's no better place than to advertise right here than with the Orange Show. You've heard us do ads for some of the same companies for years, and the reason is is because it hits. This is the demographic. We have a super targeted audience, and there's very little waste. So go to advertisewitharn.com. That's where you want to check it out. And you can sign up and find out more how to advertise with us here on the show. And Arn and I will... We'll promote your business and uh, talk about it. But, man, we really appreciate all those that want to promote with us and be a part of the family, the Arn Anderson family and the Arn Show. So thank you for that. Also, can't leave without saying to check out ad-free shows. All of you that joined us today for this live show, I'm loving it, seeing all you guys, so many familiar names, just $9 a month. And right now they're doing a free trial for a week where you can sign up and find out what all the noise is about. And, man, I'm telling you, it's a great community. Lots of content you won't find anywhere else. If you're a fan of wrestling, this is the place to be. So many different shows, so much different content, plus the live experiences just like today where these guys are sitting here getting to watch this as we record live several days before this releases and getting to interact with Arn and I. So make sure you check that out as well. Arn, this has been a lot of fun, man. We're going to do it again next week. You ready? Good call. All right, buddy. Well, listen, on behalf of the enforcer, Arn Anderson, this is Paul Bromwell, and we'll see you right back here next week on Arn.